A consul was the highest elected political office of the Roman Republic, and the consulship was considered the highest level of the cursus honorum. Each year, two consuls were elected together, to serve for a one-year term. The consuls alternated in holding imperium each month, and a consul's imperium extended over Rome, Italy, and the provinces. However, after the establishment of the empire, the consuls were merely a figurative representative of Rome's republican heritage and held very little power and authority, with the emperor acting as the supreme leader. History Under the Republic after the legendary expulsion of the last Etruscan king Lucius Tarquinius and the end of the Roman kingdom, most of the powers and authority of the king were ostensibly given to the newly instituted consulship. Originally, consuls were called praetors, referring to their duties as the chief military commanders. By at least 300 BC the title of consul was being used. Ancient writers usually derived the title consul from the Latin verb consular, to take counsel, but this is most likely a later gloss of the term which probably derives, in view of the joint nature of the office, from con and sal, get together, or from con and sell, s-e-d-l, sit down together with, or, next to. In Greek, the title was originally rendered as sigma tau rho alpha tau eta gamma rho micron sigma pi alpha tau o micron sigma strategos hypatos, and later simply as pi alpha tau o micron sigma. The consul was believed by the Romans to date back to the traditional establishment of the Republic in 509 BC, but the succession of consuls was not continuous in the 5th century BC. During the 440s, the office was quite often replaced with the establishment of the consular tribunes who were elected whenever the military needs of the state were significant enough to warrant the election of more than the two usual consuls. These remained in place until the office was abolished in 367-366 BC and the consulship was reintroduced. Consuls had extensive powers in peacetime, and in wartime often held the highest military command. Additional religious duties included certain rites which, as a sign of their formal importance, could only be carried out by the highest state officials. Consuls also read auguries, an essential step before leading armies into the field. Two consuls were elected each year, serving together, each with veto power over the other's actions, a normal principle for magistracies. It is thought that originally only patricians were eligible for the consulship. Consuls were elected by the Comitia Centuriata, which had an aristocratic bias in its voting structure which only increased over the years from its foundation. However, they formally assumed powers only after the ratification of their election in the older Comitia Curiata, which granted the consuls their imperium by enacting a law, the Lex Curiata de Imperia. If a consul died during his term or was removed from office, another would be elected by the Comitia Centuriata to serve the remainder of the term as consul suffectus or suffect consul. By contrast a consul who was elected to start the year was a consul ordinarius or ordinary consul. Ordinary consulship was more prestigious than interim consulship, partly because the year would be named for ordinary consuls. According to tradition, the consulship was initially reserved for patricians and only in 367 BC did plebeians win the right to stand for this supreme office. When the Lex Licinius Exteer provided that at least one consul each year should be plebeian, according to Gelza, only 15 of these novi homens were elected to the consulship between the consulships of Sextius in 366 BC and Cicero in 63 BC. The first plebeian consul, Lucius Sextius, was thereby elected the following year. Modern historians have questioned the traditional account of plebeian emancipation during the early Republic, noting for instance that about 30% of the consuls prior to Sextius had plebeian, not patrician, names. It is possible that only the chronology has been distorted, but it seems that one of the first consuls, Lucius Junius Brutus, came from a plebeian family. 
Another possible explanation is that, during the 5th century social struggles, the office of consul was gradually monopolized by a patrician elite. During times of war, the primary qualification for consul was military skill and reputation, but at all times the selection was politically charged. With the passage of time, the consulship became the normal end point of the cursus honorum. The sequence of offices pursued by the ambitious Roman who chose to pursue political power and influence. When Lucius Cornelius Sulla regulated the cursus by law, the minimum age of election to consul became, in effect, 41 years of age. Beginning in the late Republic, after finishing a consular year, a former consul would usually serve a lucrative term as a proconsul, the Roman governor of one of the provinces. The most commonly chosen province for the proconsulship was Cis Alpine Gaul, under the empire throughout the early years of the Principate although the consuls were still formally elected by the Comitia Centuriata, they were in fact nominated by the princeps. As the years progressed, the distinction between the Comitia Centuriata and the Comitia Tributa appears to have disappeared, and so for the purposes of the consular elections. There came to be just a single, an assembly of the people, which elected all the magisterial positions of the state, while the consuls continued to be nominated by the princeps. The imperial consulate during the period of the High Empire was an important position, albeit as the method through which the Roman aristocracy could progress through to the higher levels of imperial administration, only former consuls could become consular legates. The proconsulship of Africa and Asia, or the urban prefect of Rome, it was a post that would be occupied by a man halfway through his career, in his early thirties for a patrician, or in his early forties for most others. Emperors frequently appointed themselves, or their protagus or relatives, consuls, even without regard to the age requirements. For example, Emperor Honorius was given the consulship at birth. Cassius Dio states that Caligula intended to make his horse incite at his consul, but was assassinated before he could do so. The need for a pool of men to fill the consular positions forced Augustus to remodel the Suffolk consulate, allowing more than the two elected for the ordinary consulate. During the reigns of the Julio Claudians, the ordinary consuls who began the year usually relinquished their office mid year, with the election for the suffect consuls occurring at the same time as that for the ordinary consuls. During reigns of the Flavian and Antonine emperors, the ordinary consuls tended to resign after a period of four months, and the elections were moved to the 12th of January of the year in which they were to hold office. During the Flavian or Antonine periods, the election of the consuls were transferred to the Senate, although through to the 3rd century, the people were still called on to ratify the Senate's elections. However, the high regard placed upon the ordinary consulate remained intact, as it was one of the few offices that one could share with the emperor, and during this period it was filled mostly by patricians or by individuals who had consular ancestors. If they were especially skilled or valued, they may even have achieved a second consulate. Prior to achieving the consulate, these individuals already had a significant career behind them, and would expect to continue serving the state, filling in the post upon which the state functioned. Consequently, holding the ordinary consulship was a great honor and the office was the major symbol of the still Republican constitution. Probably as part of seeking formal legitimacy, the breakaway Gallic Empire had its own pairs of consuls during its existence. The list of consuls for this state is incomplete, drawn from inscriptions and coins. By the end of the 3rd century, much had changed. The loss of many pre-consular functions and the gradual encroachment of the equites into the traditional senatorial administrative and military functions meant that senatorial careers virtually vanished prior to their appointment as consuls. This had the effect of seeing a suffect consulship granted at an earlier age, to the point that by the 4th century, 
It was being held by men in their early 20s, and possibly younger. As time progressed, second consulates, usually ordinary, became far more common than had been the case during the first two centuries, while the first consulship was usually a Suffolk consulate. Also, the consulate during this period was no longer just the province of senators, the automatic awarding of a suffect consulship to the equestrian. Praetorian prefects allowed them to style themselves cos. Too when they were later granted an ordinary consulship by the emperor. All this had the effect of further devaluing the office of consul, to the point that by the final years of the 3rd century, Holding an ordinary consulate was occasionally left out of the cursus inscriptions. While Suffolk consulships were hardly ever recorded by the first decades of the 4th century, one of the reforms of Constantine I was to assign one of the consuls to the city of Rome, and the other to Constantinople. Therefore, when the Roman Empire was divided into two halves on the death of Theodosius I, the emperor of each half acquired the right of appointing one of the consuls, although on occasion an emperor did allow his colleague to appoint both consuls for various reasons. The consulship, bereft of any real power, continued to be a great honor, but the celebrations attending it, above all the chariot races, had come to involve considerable expense, which only a few citizens could afford to the extent that part of the expense had to be covered by the state. In the 6th century, the consulship was increasingly sparsely given, until it was allowed to lapse under Justinian I. The Western consulship lapsed in 534, with Decius Paulinus the last holder, and the consulship of the East in 541, with Anasius Faustus Albinus Pacilius. Consular dating had already been abolished in 537, when Justinian introduced dating by the emperor's regnal year and the indiction. In the Eastern Court, the appointment to consulship became a part of the right of proclamation of a new emperor from Justin II on, and is last attested in the proclamation of the future Constans II as consul in 632. In the late 9th century, Emperor Leo the Wise finally abolished consular dating with Novel 94. By that time, the Greek titles for consul and ex-consul, hypatos and apohypaton, had been transformed to relatively lowly honorary dignities. In the West, the rank of consul was occasionally bestowed upon individuals by the papacy. In 719, the title of Roman consul was offered by the Pope to Charles Martel, although he refused it. In about 853 Alfred the Great was made Roman consul by the Pope at the age of four or five.